Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is uh, Thursday, March 12th. It is about 10.48 a.m. And I wanted to make this video early so that I can get some rest because i gotta, I got to work tonight at midnight. But um, I wanted to jump into Micah chapter 1. And it's going to take some, some understanding, some digging, some deep digging to understand what is being read. I just prayed over this chapter and I read it before I'm going to record it because I've never, uh, I've read it myself before, but I've never read it in the context that we're going to read it now or explained it in any other context. But uh, I pray a special blessing upon the reading, upon the hearing, and upon applying God's word to our lives. And I hope that you guys are blessed today. Um, and we'll go from there. So here we go. Micah chapter 1. The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Morasheth in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear, all you peoples. Listen, O earth and all that is in it. Let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place. He will come down and tread on the high places of the earth. The mountains will melt under him, and the valleys will split like wax before the fire. Like waters poured down a steep place, all this is for the transgression of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Therefore I will make Samaria a heap of ruins in the field, places for planting a vineyard. I will pour down her stones into the valley, and will uncover her foundations. All her carved images shall be beaten to pieces, and all her pay as a harlot shall be burned with the fire. All her idols I will lay desolate, for she gathered it from the pay of a harlot, and they shall return to the pay of a harlot. <coughs> Verse 8. Therefore I will wail and howl. I will go stripped and naked. I will make a wailing like the jackals and a mourning like the ostriches. For her, her wounds are incurable. For it has come to Judah. It has come to the gate of my people to Jerusalem. Tell it not in Gath, weep not at all. In Beth Apra, roll yourselves in the dust. Pass by in naked shame, you inhabitants of Shafir. The inhabitant of Zeanan does not go out. Beth Azal mourns. Its place to stand is taken away from you. For the inhabitant of Marath pined for good. But disaster came down from the Lord to the gate of Jerusalem. O inhabitant of Lachish, harness the chariot to the swift steeds. She was the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion, for the transgressions of Israel were found in you. Therefore you shall give presents to Morashed Gath. The houses of Akzib shall be a lie to the kings of Israel. I will yet bring an heir to you, O inhabitant of Merishah. The glory of Israel shall come to Adalam. Make yourself bald and cut off your hair because of your precious children. Enlarge your baldness like an eagle, for they shall go from you into captivity. Let's go ahead and jump into chapter 2. Woe to those who devise iniquity and work out evil in their beds. At morning light they practice it, because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and take them by violence, also houses and seize them. So they oppress a man in his house, a man and his inheritance. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, against this family I am devising disaster, from which you cannot remove your necks, nor shall you walk haughtily. For this is an evil time. 
In that day one shall take up a proverb against you, and lament with a bitter lamentation, saying, We are utterly destroyed. He has changed the heritage of my people, how he has removed it from me. To a turncoat he has divided our fields. Therefore you will have no one to determine boundaries by lot in the assembly of the Lord. Do not prattle, you say to those who prophesy, so they shall not prophesy to you. They shall not return insult for insult. You who are named the house of Jacob, in the spirit, is the spirit of the Lord restricted? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him who walks uprightly? Lately my people have risen up as an enemy. You pull off the robe with the garment from those who trust you, and they pass by like men returned from war. The women of my people you cast out from their pleasant houses. From their children you have taken away my glory forever. Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is defiled, it shall destroy, yes, with utter destruction. If a man should walk in a false spirit and speak a lie, saying, I will prophesy to you of wine and drink, even he would be the prattler of his people, of this people. I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together like sheep of the fold, like a flock in the midst of their pasture. They shall make a loud noise because of so many people. The one who breaks open will come up before them. They will break out, pass through the gate, and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their head. As you can see, brothers and sisters, the Word of God, I couldn't just read chapter 1, I had to add chapter 2 in it, so that we can get a full picture of what's going on. Micah begins to say, listen everybody, I have a message for you, you guys need to hear this. The Lord is coming down from his heavenly throne because only he can persuade you of your wrongdoings. Only he can remind you because you're so thick-headed, thick-skinned, don't want to listen, don't see that, that the things that you're doing wrong are wrong. So God's coming down from his throne, and when he comes down, the mountains will melt, the valleys will split like wax before the fire. He is going to come and destroy you if you don't get it right. If you don't understand what the Holy Scripture says from the beginning of time, that God loves you, and when you turn your back on him, you're making bringing an open shame upon him. He is your creator. You are the creation. Don't you get it? You don't listen to God's prophets. You don't listen to God's people. He's going to have to come down and straighten things out himself. What did Christ do? Christ came down. He was born of a virgin. He was raised up. He, he became a man. This is, 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 is our Lord and Savior from heaven. He had to come down to straighten us out. Because there was wrath. There was destruction. There was a penalty for this flesh that we didn't understand was going to lead us into eternal damnation. So God came down from his high place to persuade us to turn to him. It says here in chapter 2, Woe to those who devise iniquity and work out evil on their beds. At morning light they practice it because it is the power of their hand. They covet fills, they want what other people have, and they take them by violence. 
Verse 3, Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, against this family I am devising evil. I am devising disaster to those who practice evil. <coughs> I got something here. It says, Since they say, Micah 2.12, verse 2.12, uh, I will surely assemble all of you, O Jacob. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together. That's not it. 2-6. Oh, it says here. In 2-6 through 9. Do not prattle, you... Say to those who prophesy, they shall not prophesy to you. They shall not return insult for insult. You are you who are named the house of Jacob. Is the spirit of the Lord restricted? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him who walks uprightly? You see, it says here to me, and it could probably say something different to you, but... When we walk outside of God's word, when we walk outside of what the Bible says, we reap those things that are against our Lord. We reap in those things that are of the flesh. But when we walk in God's words, it says, Do not my words do good to him who walks uprightly? Verse 8, Lately my people have risen up as an enemy. Lately my people have risen up like an enemy. You pull off the robe with the garment from those who trust you as they pass by like men returned from war. It's harder for, for a preacher or a Christian or, or, or a man or woman of God to, to go out and, and let you know about the love of Christ It's harder now because people are practicing evil people are, are practicing things that are not of God It's hard for us to go out and preach the word we're getting beat up. We're getting stepped on. We're getting we're getting pushed all around. And when you look at us, it looks like we are returning from war. But people, I got to tell you that this is war. The devil will not stand much longer because the power of Christ prevails. The power of Jesus Christ prevails. It's that name. If you want to defeat demons in your life, you you say the name of Jesus, the name which is above all names. You know, and, and right here it says that lately my people have risen up as an enemy. Why does it say that? Sinners cannot expect to rest in a land they have polluted. They shall only be obliged to depart out of this land, but it shall destroy you. If we apply this to our state in the present world, There is corruption in the world through lust, and we should keep at a distance from it. It is not our rest. It was designed for our passage, but not for our portion. Our inn, but not our home. Here we have no continuing city. Let us therefore arise and depart. You know what that means? That means that, that we are only pilgrims and sojourners. We're just passing through in this life. The things that people store up on this life in this earth is going to stay on this earth. Christ wants us to store up treasures in heaven. He wants us to store up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor anything can destroy. When you build a relationship with Christ, when you build a relationship knowing the God that you serve, is a loving God, is a trusting God, is a powerful God, is the only God that can that can redeem you and straighten out your life, your life will be blessed. 
your life will be blessed. There's nothing that can come against the love of Christ. There's nothing that can come against the restoration and the blessings and, and the life that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, Satan's not going to be uh, very happy with us once we realize the power that Christ has over him. The Holy Spirit in you. You need to, to realize that, that once you accept Christ and you, you allow his spirit in you, you have that power to overcome. You have a power within you to overcome any obstacle that is in your way. But the devil doesn't want you knowing that. The devil wants to blind you by lusts. The devil wants to blind you by temptation. The devil wants to, to keep you distracted and from not opening up your Bible. You know, he wants you playing on your phone. He wants you to be distracted by this and that and the news and, and everything else that's going on around you. He wants you to take your eyes off of Jesus. But I want to tell you, right now we're, we're, we're in the boat and we're going to step out of the, If you want to step out of the boat, don't look at anything around you. Don't look at, at what the news is saying about the coronavirus and, and all this stuff that, that's happening in the world. But keep your eyes focused on the master and you will walk and you will continue to walk and you will, you will walk on water and you will do great things because Christ has a better plan for you. Christ has a, has a predestined plan for you to do great things. Don't be like these people where God's wrath is going to come. Don't bring Christ... Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that. You know, Christ came down. I'm not going to say don't bring Christ down because Christ already came down because our predicament was already bad. The things that we had to... that we're living in is already bad. This skin, this flesh, this world... It's already bad, so Christ had to come. Today is the day of salvation. Today is, a, is the time, if you're watching this video right now, you got to make a decision within your heart, within your mind, within yourself, if you truly want life in Christ. If you don't, you're going to get God's destruction, His wrath. And I can't picture my life without Christ. He has redeemed my life so much that I wouldn't give it back for nothing. You know, uh, I just hope you guys are blessed from these words. I hope you guys can understand that getting into your Bible is one of the most important things. Praying on top of reading your Bible It strengthens you. It helps you put on that armor of God. You know, wrote, uh, Ephesians 6, 11. You know, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and to continue standing. You know, the devil doesn't have no dominion over your life. The devil doesn't have no, no right to come in and destroy things that God has planted the devil has no dominion. He has no authority. He has he's, he's shaking in his boots. Once you come to the realization that Christ already defeated him. Let's make it our aim today, people. To find your place in God's kingdom. To ask the Lord to show you in his word what I'm doing wrong. What do I need to do? To make things right. It's not no great deed. Or no act. Or it is an action. But it's not no great deed. Or, or anything like that. All you need to do is accept Christ. To believe that he came to this earth as a man. That he was beaten. And bloodied. And bruised. And, and crucified on the cross for you. He gave up his last breath on the cross. 
But three days later, he rose out of the tomb. And now he sits on the right hand of God. If you confess that to your Lord, to Jesus as your Lord and Savior and ask him to come into your life, I can guarantee you, you will see change. So there you guys have it. We'll go ahead and jump into to Micah chapter 3 and possibly chapter 4 tomorrow. So I hope you guys have a blessed day. Peace.